Just look, there you go. Good afternoon. Three, uh, six minutes after three o'clock on April Fool's Day, 2016, April 1st, 2016. want to say happy birthday to my, uh, my uh, five-year-old. No, not five-year-old. This was my girlfriend when I was five years old. And she invited me to her birthday party. Her name is Kathy Lutz, Dusenberry. She invited me to her birthday party, and I opened all her presents while the kids were out playing. Does that give you an idea of the kind of kid I was? Not shocked. Not shocked at all. Anyway, so I said happy. I, I call her every April 1st, except last year I was out of town. It was the NRB. And so I was out of town, and I forgot to call her. Can we get some mics on, please? I was out of town, and so I didn't get a caller, and she was sad like all year long. So I called her yesterday, and then I called her really early this morning and left her a voicemail. And the fact that she didn't answer tells me that I was the first person to reach her, wish her a happy birthday. Awesome. Yeah. Because she was just, she didn't normally take your call until she remembers it's her no, birthday. She, does. And then- she always takes my call. <laughs> All right, so we have a uh, man. We have a, a, a packed show today. Boom! Lots of stuff going on. Um, one of the most important things, probably, is the fact that we are going to talk about this uh, transgendered student in woman's locker room raises an uproar. A forty-five-year-old man uh, shows his junk to a seventeen-year-old girl in a uh, locker room. And it's raising all kinds of heck, and it's legal. This is in North Carolina, and it's legal. And by the way, as uh, Mike Carbone pointed out, this is a uh, this is a story from Good Morning America. This is not a story from Fox or you know the Physical Conservative or anything like that, where people always say, "Oh, well, you know, it comes from one of those conservative sites." And as Mike pointed out really clearly on Facebook, um, this is this is reality. This is happening right now. This is becoming the law in states across the union. We just saw this happen. What at Roosevelt High School, where they took the men's bathroom and the women's bathroom. This is a single stall um, that used to be faculty. Right. And they made them both transgendered. But see, it's only one stall. Right. Which is kind of what's so silly about that to make it, quote, transgender is it's a single stall. Yeah. That's that's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's it's one bathroom. It doesn't matter what the sign. It's a it's one person's going to be in there. Right. So but that just to me, that kind of behavior is really the most silly because it just says, hey, This is, we're going to use this language. We're going to approve this language. We're going to approve that there is no gender, that you're not a man and I'm not a woman and there are no genders. We're just going to, we're going to believe into that silliness um, as we talk like this, especially when a school does it when they don't need to. When you've got a single use bathroom, um, they don't need to make it a quote transgender bathroom, but that's just what they want to call it to appeal to that audience. I, I think Roosevelt was rather brilliant, quite frankly, because they have now... They have now pushed the question to, okay, we have two bathrooms in our school that either gender can use at any time. If the powers to be on the LGBT question mark community push that at Roosevelt, you have to translate that to they want people of the opposite sex in the bathroom at the same time. Right. That's what they have to push it to. And I want to hear them do that. Because they, 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 they can frame that any way they want, as PC as they want. We've given you what you want. You now have a bathroom that you can go in any time, no matter what gender you are. 
If that's not good enough, now you want to make sure that men and women are mixing up together. That's a good point. I wonder if Roosevelt High School really thought that through or if you're just being nice to them. Um, I don't know if they thought it through. They can steal my idea, but that's, I mean. <laughs> well, you have to consider, you know, if this one bathroom is at the other end of the hall, it, they may label it as inconvenient, you see. Yep. See what I'm saying? Oh, you're, I think you're absolutely right, Bob. That is mm-hmm. that is probably the direction they'll go, too. Well, these are right next to each other. Oh, they are? They're in the, they're in the Roosevelt uh, High School uh, Library. Yeah, but there are more bathrooms, aren't there? Oh, there's tons of more bathrooms in the school. That's what I'm saying. Well, you have to run to the library. You know what I'm saying. So I'm just being the devil's advocate. Yeah, and that's okay. I I will. So my comment back to that would be, so how many feet? How how far apart is too far apart? But see, nobody does that. Because because here's the next thing out of their mouth. Oh, so you're a homophobe. Right. (laughs) Oh, so you're a bigot. And, and, And I don't know about you. If someone actually calls you, if someone on that side of the fence, the liberal, the progressive, the low information voter, whatever you want to call them, I call them broken and I want to pray for them. If those people turn around and say, oh, so you're just a homophobe, what would you do? On this radio show, Frank is a gay man and (laughs) he is for the transgendered bathrooms. And you say, well, just how many uh, feet do they need to be apart? And Frank comes back and says, well, you're just a homophobe. You're a bigot. I just say, no, I'm not. Good. You're 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 better than most people because most people get scared. Oh, when they hear that line. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, what do you mean? You know, and then see, then the visceral, visceral, then the anger comes out. Yeah. Visceral, visceral. Then the anger comes out. And pretty soon they've made you feel guilty and shamed for thinking like that. And that's kind of what uh, Stanley Hauer was was talking about the other day. We cannot back down to these people who want it both ways. They want to have tolerance, but just not from you. You, I don't have to be tolerant of you. You have to be tolerant of me, but I don't have to be tolerant of you. And who's Stanley? Stanley Hauerwas? Yeah. You were on, oh, I see. You're, okay, good move. Stanley Hauerwas <laughs> was the, is the, um, the head of the Divinity School at Duke University, one of the largest divinity schools in the world. He's one a of the theo- most successful. He's a, he's a professor of theological ethics at yeah. Duke University. Yeah, and he was also the theologian of the year for Time Magazine a couple of years ago. Right, has written some uh, amazing books. Uh, the one that we talked about mostly the other day was um, uh, Alien Resident Alien Resident yeah. Alien. And uh, uh, several other books that he, he's written, too. Well, the challenge, Mac, is, is we stand up, as, and I agree with you that we as Christians need to speak the truth and we need to not be afraid to, um, to do that. We also need to make sure that what we're speaking and calling truth is, in fact, truth, that the truth that we are saying is, is truthful. That we're not just saying inflammatory things in order to say inflammatory things to get a reaction, um, but that we're saying things that are truthful. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I think, um, no, I'm not going to say sometimes. I know that I've done it, and I know that I've done it more recently. And since hearing uh, Professor Hauerwas say recently that how do, we, how do we solve the crisis in the church in America, and he said never lie, I've thought about that a lot because it's easy to lie if we don't know what the truth is. And so you have to seek truth to be able to not lie. Um, and the church, I think, Christians, especially here in America, get really bent out of shape about homosexuals wanting rights or wanting transgender people to have access to any bathroom that they want. Well, we just, get, just the most broken, sinful people there are. Right. Because but, they want to push their sin on everybody else. Right. But I, here's, what, here's what I'd like to say, because I need to correct this in myself. I tend to say all the time that the sin that is the big deal in their life is the homosexuality or the transgender or whatever it is. But their greatest sin is unbelief. Right. Their right. greatest sin is unbelief. And that's the thing that as Christians, we forget that they're only going to do what seems right to them. And 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 uh, I'm only going to do what seems right to me when I don't believe um, that God is true. 
You know, one of the most famous verses, the Bible says that the fool says in his heart, uh, there is no God. That verse is going to be all over the interwebs all day today because it's April Fool's Day. And it used to bother me a lot when Christians would post this and make fun of atheists. See, you're a fool. The Bible says you're a fool. Well, the reality is that was a part of a psalm that was sung by the church. And it was a reminder. It's a reminder to me that I'm the fool when I, when I sin, when I willingly sin, I am acting as though there is no God, and I am the one who is, in fact, being the fool. But how come the Bible contradicts itself by saying, call no man a fool, but yet the Bible says, a fool says in his heart, there is no God? Because that's not, necess- I would, that's not necessarily calling someone a fool. No. Okay. A, a fool is a thing. There is such a thing as a fool, right? But, but the, the admonition to not call somebody a fool is the way that you speak to someone else, whereas the observation that someone is a fool is something that can be. And I just admitted that I'm a fool. So am I allowed to say that I'm a fool? Can I call myself a fool, or is that but violating the word of God? Their argument is that we're trying to force our beliefs on them, when in reality, we're just wanting the status quo the way it is. They're the ones who are trying to change the debate and force their ideals and their rules on society and what marriage should or should not be. Right. We're just trying to hold the line, hold the status quo. But they would say that the status quo, I think they would say, the status quo is oppressive. I mean, that's the problem. The status quo is oppressive, and we can't keep the status quo uh, in line. This is something that they would, they'd often say. You know, There was a time when it was okay for uh, only whites to use this bathroom and only blacks to use this bathroom. That was the status quo, and we didn't want to change that. But and, if, and that was oppressive, and we needed to change it. If I'm a guy, and I want to be pregnant and carry a child, and it's impossible for me to do right. that, can I claim discrimination? Not if you can't do it. The, the, the challenge is that transgendered folks are actually changing their body. They're manipulating their body. They're damaging their body. Some of them are having surgeries and losing body parts and adding body parts. But they're still a given sex. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, I'll read from uh, the Facebook pages. I have a really good friend of mine. I love this man, Michael Chapman. I don't know why God brought us together, because he's as far goofy and left as you can get. Wait till you hear his answer on the transgender. It's live here on The Truth. I do have it. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Stockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after three o'clock, three twenty-one in the afternoon, first day of April, April Fool's Day. Now, I did post something on Facebook to ask people what jokes were played on them, and uh, I'll tell you about some of those that were brought up. It's pretty funny. I had forgot the one where you take cellophane wrap and you cover the toilet, and then you put the lid down, and it kind of surprises whoever comes up to use the bathroom the next time. It also had the one where you take the food color in and you put it onto a little part of a paper towel and you stick it up into the faucet and then re re hook it and then so when you turn on the water it's red or blue or whatever. There was one in there that said you remove the shower head and put a lifesaver candy yeah, in there get that. and I don't what's the joke? What happens? It didn't like I'm supposed to know what happens? Yeah, I Does that I don't plug know it that. up and it doesn't work or if you put a lifesaver in? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you remove the shower head and put a lifesaver in. Well my guess is when the water comes out it smells like Life a saver? lifesaver. Well, that'd be kind of be funny. I that'd be nice. Yeah, I'd shower in that or because it still has the water can get still get through. Yeah, I mean like minty, right? It just wears it out. Yeah. Minty fresh. I would shower in a minty fresh shower. I think you ought yeah. to go home and try it. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I probably will not, but I would. That would be fun. Because you know what you'd do? You'd remove the shower head and you'd stuff a bunch of, of lifesavers up there, and then you couldn't get the shower head back on, and you'd be embarrassed, <laughs> and you wouldn't tell your wife. Your wife would go in to use the shower, and she'd shut her eyes. And then put her hair, turn the water on and put the soap on, and then lifesavers would come out and hit him in the nose. Yeah, that yeah. would go bad. That That's probably what I would good. do. No, that would not, not go. go good. Would not go well. All right. Who who who's the guy sitting over here with the ponytail and the yeah. beard? I don't know. Stranger. He came from a far off planet, far far distant planet. It's Mr. Jimmy in. Johns. Mr. Jimmy Johns. Yes, the builder of all Jimmy Johns in Central Iowa. We've Just, missed you, Frank. Well, thank you. Do you listen to us while when you're gone? <laughs> yes, I did. I heard Luke, Tim, and uh, the Duke professor the other day. The Duke what? The Duke professor. Oh, I thought you said suppressor. De- the d- professor. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? You you and him probably could have had a good conversation. Yeah, I was tempted to call in. Yeah, he kind of talks at your genius level. Yes. Not Luke. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> yes, Stanley. <laughs> um, now, Luke is still... Still on cloud nine from that. And he's listened to it several times, and he enjoys listening to it more than he enjoys. And I'm sure he's critiquing himself quite a bit. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> but tell me about, you had some friends. Because basically, oh, yeah. we, we got, here's how we got this guy on there. If you weren't listening, this was Wednesday. And you posted something in the morning on Facebook, and I somehow got, about this Stanley Hauerwas. Yeah. And I somehow got the idea that he was a hero of yours. Yeah. So I very quickly got him booked on the show. And that's a uh, provident. Prov- it, that's a God thing. Providential. It's a God thing. Why do you need a big fancy word with nine syllables? It's God. It's just God. Yep. He did it. It's he his did fault. It. He did it. I blame him. And so <laughs> I post on the, the 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 Facebook a few Googles later. Hey, I got him on the show today. Well, you didn't believe it. No, I didn't. I thought, yeah, right. And so. Then I went to Bible study over the lunch hour because we have a Bible study. By the way, if you're home listening or driving around in your cab or your car or whatever, you're invited to our Wednesday noon Bible study at Living Faith. It's just a little group of us. We're in 1 Corinthians. Um, And I just happened to mention to Luke that has he ever heard of this guy? Well, the tongue rolls out and, you know, we we get the hot sweats. And apparently uh, Stanley is one of his mentors, heroes. Yeah. He wrote the book Resident Alien, Alien, which Luke said on the air changed everything for his ministry for him. Yeah. 
So he came on the air, and he was. He was like a giddy schoolgirl. It was one of my favorite things about that whole broadcast was just straight how excited Luke Tim was. Yeah. I mean, he would just, I mean, and what was so cool is he would ask him a question, or he would say, so you would ask him a question, Mac, and Professor Harawas would say something, and, and Bob, you can attest to this, because Luke's sitting right next to you, and he just starts pumping his fist like, yes, 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 that was the best answer I've ever heard to any question ever in the history of all questions. Well, and then once, uh, and I, I know when this was in the show, once Stanley, or Luke made some statement, and Stanley said, yes, I would agree with that. And Luke, like, closes his eyelids. Yeah. Like, yes, yes, I've been I've been uh, knighted by the great <laughs> Stanley Hauerwas. Yeah, totally. He was like, I'm right. I was right. Oh. All right. So um, uh, lots of different topics today. It's a Friday. It's just us, gang. Fridays are 15% more fun when we're here, and we're more fun when you're here, too. Phone lines are wide open. We had Paul on the line. Did you make him mad and hang up? You did. You made him mad, didn't you, Jeb? We have a new producer by the name of Jeb. Nicest young man, senior at Grandview College. But he makes all the listeners mad. Because he picks up the phone, and rather than saying, Hi, it's Webcast One in 99.3 Max World. Would you like to get on the air? He picks up the phone and says, 25 cents and I'll put you on the air. And they all get mad and hang up. He's trying to raise money. <laughs> Broke college student, you know, got to do what yeah, you can do. That's right. He's you got know? college loans. All yeah. right. So, transgender. It's here. It happened at Roosevelt High School. They've changed two bathrooms. In North Carolina, a 45 year old man uh, was allowed to be in a female restroom, and a 17 year old woman felt emotionally assaulted when he showed, him, showed her his junk. I, yeah. Can I use the word junk? Is that you can use the word junk? Let me read the quote actually from the police officer. This is from the ABC News report. Uh, the police officer. Yeah. By said, the way, this is ABC. This is not Fox. Right. This is not you know some conservative Tribune. This is ABC. Good Morning America. Right. The police officer said a mother reported her daughter was upset because she observed a person at the women's locker room naked and displaying male genitalia. Said a police reported file junk. September by a mother on behalf of her 17 year old old daughter now why is that a story that's just inappropriate in general what is he doing in there well the gentleman who was in there well i'm not a man i'm a woman he says yes so i have the right to be in here and legally in north carolina he has the right to be in there that's credible frank what percentage of the population are we making these exceptions for oh none minuscule numbers not even one not even one a, a tenth well, one. of 1%. I mean, not even 1%. Oh, percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know a the A tenth of 1%, two tenths of 1%. Well, I mean, we're making all this change in our bathroom system because of a few percentile of people in the United States. It makes no sense. Well, but, When there is unisex bathrooms available for people. Sure. A lot or of large family bathrooms, I mean. I agree with you. A lot of large, uh, even big box stores, like I think Walmarts do this. I know the, the mall here that we're in, um, they have family restrooms. Um, these are these are restrooms intended uh, for the whole family to go in there. And yeah, if I'm here with my granddaughter and she needs to go potty, I don't have to take her to the boys' room, which right. is embarrassing for her. And I, she doesn't take me in the girls' room, which, quite frankly, would not be acceptable to any woman in there and shouldn't be. So I can go into the family restroom and have a private stall right. in which my daughter can, my granddaughter can use the restroom. See, and I think those you're, you're exact. Those are really great progressive ways to address a variety of issues with decency um, and sense sense decency sensitivity and the security of men and women in our country because i sincerely feel for any parent who when the the child sex is to be named and you're getting all anxious to tell is it a boy or a girl to you to the parents you know to the grandparents etc aunts uncles etc and the doctor comes out and says well you don't never want to hear that what is it boy or a girl and the doctor hesitates. That's got to be a terrible feeling as a parent to go through that. So I sympathize for any kid who has that issue, but do we change our whole system over it? Well, and, and Frank, it's not those people that want that changed. Those people, hem, hem, hemaphrodites? Hemaphrodites. Okay. I'm not talking about those people. I'm, uh, it, those people need um, as much care and love as we can give them. Because that is the way they were created. I don't know why, but they were. I'm talking about the guy who says, I'm a girl. Today. Today, I'm a girl. Tomorrow? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, and we now have a law that respects that. 
Now, let's, guys, let's back up and think about that for a minute. Let's roll this back to, to right at the foot of the cross with our arms around Jesus' ankle, who died for all of our sins. This transgendered uh, uh, identifier, whatever you want to call him, I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful. The guy that wakes up in the morning, Bruce Jenner, who wakes up in the morning and says, today I'll be Caitlin. Tomorrow I think I'll be, probably be Bruce. These people are pushing God's law. Why are they not equally blasphemous as the guy who says GD or JC or the Holy Spirit doesn't exist and I'm an atheist and there is no God, et cetera, et cetera? Why is that not a level? And I, I can't ask God that. And I don't know if there's something in the Bible about it. Does it talk about people who wake up one morning and they think they're the opposite sex? Any, even though there's no change? I think the closest thing to it, it speaks about eunuchs, that were eunuchs, born eunuchs, or castrated to make eunuchs, to watch over the harems. So obviously they weren't to be attracted to the king's harem because they didn't have anything to be attracted with. Do they, do, do they, do they put them down in the Bible, or do they just reference them? It's just a reference. So, so these, these eunuchs... Don't walk around now and say they're female. No, they they're were men with no outdoor plumbing. Well, they're men that were castrated and didn't have any testicles. So clearly that they, would be no outdoor plumbing. But, Thank you. Frank. But but the Bible talks about eunuchs who were born that way and eunuchs who were who, who were done that way for a specific purpose to watch over the king's harem sure. so they could be trusted. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, 515-240-0, or I'm sorry, 515-244-0077-244-0077. And the Service Legends Truth Talk text line is 515-809-0993. Bob, you've got a text or a chat for us? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, no. One of them is... When don't, you answer like that, I'm worried. Yeah, don't give Roosevelt too much credit. This is the same school that wouldn't let uh, Martin Luther King jr's niece speak about civil rights because she is pro-life now listen to that listen to that you won't allow the niece of one of the greatest human beings that ever lived a human being that has a very important boulevard in our town named after him in fact it was changed from a what harding was a world war one harding road that that but, but he was that was a world war one general from iowa i think uh, President or General Harding. That. Anyway, so we think so highly of this man, but his niece, who chooses to be pro-life, can't speak at the school because she's pro-life. But I'll guarantee you if somebody was pro-choice, they'd put them right there on the, the front of the pedestal. Now, doesn't that just make your head spin? How do... You're driving down the road right now. You're sitting in an office building. You're doing whatever you're doing. You're listening to this on a podcast. Just no matter, no matter what side you're on, can I just, just you and me for just a second, no matter what side you're on, make sense of it. Explain it to someone who appreciates not only creation, but the creator. Explain it to somebody who ha who loves science and honors the person who created it. And you say, son or daughter, today you can decide whatever gender you want to be. You can dress up like a boy or you can dress up and go to school like a girl. We just had a situation. Was that here in Des Moines where a young man was murdered and one day he'd go to the school as Presley and the next day, he'd go to the school as Priscilla. And he would decide in the morning what gender he wanted to be. And, and the law demanded, and the liberal, low-information voters demanded that they respect that. Now, when I was growing up, they would have been shipped to the funny farm, where life is good all of the time. All right, we're coming back. Mm, just get heartburn thinking about this stuff. Chris is here, Frank's here, Bob's here, Jeb's producing, and most importantly, you're here. Thanks for listening. 515-244-0077. How, 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 how?
How are we going to deal with this? Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make Make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a lot. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Twenty-two minutes before the top of the hour, three thirty-eight on the first day of April in the Lord's year twenty sixteen. J. Michael McCoy. Today's show about politically correct, and as Christians, what are we going to do about it? We had Stanley Hauerwas on earlier this week. He is the head of the Divinity School at Duke University, and my first question was: Was what are you passionate about? And he said, reclaiming the church's integrity back into the culture. Now, understand how he said that, because this is important. Reclaiming the church's identity back into culture. So it's not changing the culture. It's reclaiming the church's identity. At the end of the show, I said, Stanley, what can we do? What can I do? What can Chris do? What can Frank do? What can my listener do? Individually, what can they do to, 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 to make it so the church can reclaim their identity back into the culture? And I thought I would get some long theological, philosophical, you know, tyrant. Instead, he used two words. Never lie. And I thought about that, and I thought about that, and then I wrote a blog post about it, and Chris had a great comment on there. Imagine what would happen if everybody stopped lying. If the person who wanted to shine and get attention, show off, uh, whatever you want to call that person, I was that person in high school, or not in high school, well, maybe in high school too, but certainly in grade school. My teachers had a hard time with me. 
because I was very insecure. My 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 uh, my motivation was to be significant. Going back on Jen, uh, the impeccable Jen Browns or impeccable Jen Woods Green comment yesterday. Her question was what. Um, is or was your motivation. And when I was younger, my motivation was I needed to be significant because I grew up in a household in which I was insignificant. I wanted to be significant. Well, I wanted to be significant because I believed a lie. And that was that I was insignificant. Well, if I had turned to my creator, the one who created me, and asked him if I was significant... God would have said, you're the most significant person in your life, Mac. I love you. You are as important as any other human being I have put on the face of the earth. Now, I will tell you, Mac, you are an individual. You are unique. The liberals like to say a snowflake. I'm okay with snowflake. I resemble that remark. But the... The important thing to remember was that so many of our lives, probably every one of our lives, are messed up because somewhere along the line, we believe the lie. A man who chooses to have an affair on his wife believes his wife doesn't love me like she used to. And if she loved me, she'd do this or that, or she'd make me happy, or she'd please me in that way. And then a, 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 another woman comes along and she's broken because she believed a lie that she's not lovable. And only through sex with a man can she be that lovable. So the two insignificant, unlovable people hook up and try to feed that lie, which turns into a sin. Frank? That's low self-esteem. And God would have died if Look, you... we've, we, we've got the greatest psychiatrist... <laughs> Chris, in the whole world here. When not building Jimmy John's, I part-time at psychology. Yeah. Are you no. like uh, Linus? Not Linus, uh, uh, Lucy. Yeah, five cents. I can't five cents. Christ would have died if you would have been the only one. Correct. That's right. So, politically correct. People who are politically correct believe the lies. I can't, I can't put a, um, and I'm going to use something that doesn't matter to me, but I think it matters to some of our listeners, so I'm going to bring it up. I don't care about the Confederate flag. I, 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 I don't think ill of people who have one, and I, and I think people who think that that should never be flown again because it's a measurement of hate are broken. They're believing the lie. They're believing a lie that people can look at that flag and feel insignificant, especially if you're a person of color. I don't know about you. I see a Confederate flag and I think about what's that TV show? Who Dukes of Hazard? <laughs> That's all I think about. But now go, go on Google and see if you can buy a Confederate flag. You have to go black market. You can't go to Walmart. You can't go to Kmart, Target. You cannot buy retail. A Confederate flag. Because if you're found selling a Confederate flag, one of those three-tenths of one percent wackos will come out and form a little group, and now they're carrying signs that says Target is racist. But you do realize there's men who fought and died for that flag. Absolutely. And we should honor them. But instead... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. All right. Hold on. This from a man from the South. <laughs> men fought and died for a lot of flags and I'm not going to I don't want to do this because everybody does this but Hitler's flag the national flag yeah. that, he, that he waved men died defending that flag uh -huh. just because someone died defending a flag doesn't make it okay and it doesn't make those people honorable I think, I think when we say that we're never going to lie, one of the hardest, the reason why not lying is so difficult is because it's really easy to say, here I know what truth is and here I know what lie, what lie is and I'm going to not do the lie thing. But what's really, really, really difficult is to seek truth and to be, and to be honest and say, here's the deal. The Confederate flag represented the Southern uh, Union, the states in the South on the United States. They, uh, they were a part of our country. We had um, 
And in a lot of ways, it's a very positive symbol with a lot of positive history to it, a lot of things that people care deeply about, states' rights, independence, these kinds of things. But all I wanted to pause on is just say, let's not get so excited to say that just because somebody died under some flag, it doesn't make it honorable. That's all would I'm saying. You, I'm, I'm all right with would that. Would you believe Abraham Lincoln? Would I believe what, him? What, 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 what I believe? Well, you know, he posted on the internet that you can't believe everything well, on there. <laughs> That's a- what Abraham Lincoln <laughs> penned with his own hand a letter to Horace Greeley in, I believe, 1862, saying that Frank he was, was there. He, that handed, he, was he not, handed the white paper to Lincoln as he inked it. That he was not willing to lose any soldier in the cause of slavery. Sla- the, 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 the Civil War was always over preservation of the Union. It was never over slavery. Initially, yep. So them men that was fighting, and most of the time brother against brother, they were fighting for what they felt was a just cause. Now, clearly we know that, that slavery is not necessarily a just cause, but if, if you're being stomped on and your rights is being stomped on, we're supposed to have this union, this voluntary union that people enter into, and somebody's not upholding their end of the bargain. The South was being taken for granted. They were stomped on. They were ridiculed, whatever you want to say. They were fighting for what they felt was a just cause. Slavery was an afterthought in the whole thing. I'm sorry. And, and Abraham Lincoln said so himself. 515-244-0077. That's the number to call if your voice is going to be heard. You're going to have to make that decision. But if you call, Jeb will pick up the phone and we'll put you on the air. 25 cents or not. And Bob Monsteret is watching the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. I posted something today just so you can follow if you've just tuned in. This show is about political incorrectness. That's what this show's about. We'll talk about Donald Trump later because, man, that guy pushes every single button on the PC crowd. And the PC crowd just goes wild. Ballistic. Absolutely. Chris Matthews, his display of journalistic integrity equaled that of a cornflake the other day when he ramrodded. And I'm not a Trump fan. You know that. But I am a man. I I am a fan of human uh, decency. And Chris Matthews railroaded Donald Trump into a conversation in which he made an incorrect answer. And even though Donald Trump has come back to correct that, they're still MSNBC is still playing the other story. But yet when Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden say something and then take it back, oh, we, we have to honor that. That's political correctness. You might also define it as hypocrisy. Where do you find political correctness unbelievable in our society? From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. 
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten minutes before four o'clock, 3.50 on the first day of April. In the Lord's year, 2016, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is Max World Live. You know what I'm thinking about doing since it's Friday and we're just having fun? What's that? I'm thinking about calling Kathy Lutz Duesenberry live on the air. Yes, her birthday today, right? And wishing her a happy birthday. That'd be fun. This is a young lady that I've known all of my life. We were born, well, today's her birthday, mine's in 15 days, so we were born 15 days apart, went to the same schools, same church, same, same schools all the way through college. And uh, she invited me to her fifth birthday party. And the story she'll tell is while all the kids were playing, I opened up all of her presents. So for every year except one, I have called her on April Fool's Day to wish her a happy birthday. So I think maybe next hour I'm going to call her and surprise her live on the air. And, and, and yeah, I think I might do that. I had her on the air once before. She's a fun kid. She used to be the mayor of a city outside of Kansas City. And then she was like a, a county supervisor. But she, she's lefty. Does she have le- red hair? No. Oh. She, no, that's not. That, that's Linda Kelly. Oh. You're thinking of my first girlfriend in Your first Your first grade. crush. Kathy and I were never boyfriend-girlfriend. We were more like pals. So how many years did you continue to open her presents? I, I think that was the only one. Oh, till that, now, because I don't think I was invited to any more birthday parties. <laughs> yeah, you don't get invited back generally after that. No. All right. Uh, today our conversation is loose, and it won't be anything without you. We're talking about political correctness, and it is spread across the land. And how do we, as Christians, deal with political correctness? Because political correctness usually follows a lie. Specifically, we're talking about transgender, or not specifically, in one area, we're talking about transgendered people. People who decide today they're going to be a boy. And then tomorrow they decide to be like a girl. And they're, they're, they, they have jobs and they have... They're, did you know that Matt McCoy, no relation to Mac McCoy, Matt McCoy, bleeding heart liberal Democratic legislature in the state, legislator in the state of Iowa, submitted a bill that transgendered people would be protected under the hate crime policy. And if you were to, if you were to say what I'm saying right here on the radio, it could be considered a hate crime. Now, come and charge me. I'd love nothing more. I'd love nothing more. That this is, this is that side of me that Jesus. Uh, I I I know he still loves me. I, I just don't know if he's happy when I'm like that because I I just challenge people. Challenge a Christian talk radio host. Charge him with a hate crime because he said transgendered people are simply broken, sinful people charge me with a hate crime that's what matt mccoy at the legislature wants to do the answer to political correctness is speech and more speech and more speech well it's what stanley said on wednesday we have to reclaim the church's identity back into the culture there is a truth we know there's a truth and we have to stop backing up bending over being quiet being embarrassed and apologizing when somebody on the left a non-believer a non-follower a sinful, broken person, they just don't know it yet, says, oh, no, you're, 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 you're a Christian bigot. You're, 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 that's a hate speech. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. If I want to be a man this morning and identify myself as a man today, and then I want to be a woman tomorrow, I can do that. No, you can't. You can't. There is a truth. Your creator created you. As either a man or a woman. Now, yes, there are people who are born, what do you call them, eunuchs? Eunuchs, hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites. I've never met a hermaphrodite. I'd love to talk to one of them. I don't know. I don't know what, are they boys or girls? I mean, I guess if they've got, I mean, do they produce sperm or do they produce eggs? I don't know. Wouldn't that be the one? Wouldn't that be the thing? Whatever the plumbing is on the outside. if, if, If my participation in creation is that of supplying the eggs or supplying the fertilizer. Doesn't that pretty much say whether I'm a man or a woman? 
I don't know, Frank. Well, hermaphrodites have some parts of both genders. Uh, yeah, but what do they? What? 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 How? How do they create? That's my question. So, well, a lot of times they can't because they don't have ovaries or they don't have testicles. They have some broken parts of both rese- right. that resembles both sexes. And again, right. I feel very, very much sympathy. Right, and that's and that is that is a. Uh, um, that is, what's the right word? It's an abnormality. Right? If someone is born without an arm, that's not that's right. not that's an abnormality. We 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 don't condemn that. That's just someone who's born yeah. with some uh, people. Unfortunately, are born with. Yeah. It, they're called uh, handicapped. Right. And they're covered under the American for Disabilities Act. Sure, there's there's handicapped stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the phones where Paul is standing by. Paul, who uh, we hear from Paul every day, and it's not a day until we hear from Paul. Paul, you're live in Max World. How are you? <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good, uh, buddy. I would have talked early, but I had to get off. I had to go to the courthouse. No, uh oh. Uh oh. You in jail or what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Spent entire time. Didn't, didn't like it much. Okay. I don't think I'll do that again. All right. What it was, I was going to call about my father, George Kingery. He used to uh, uh, write letters to the editor and uh, for the, uh, the Des Moines Register. And during the 70s, 80s, and when all this was really hitting the fan quite a bit, free love and all this other stuff going on there. My father had written an article about uh, being born a certain way, because uh, on the Donahue show, talking about uh, he had everybody's born gay or born this way or born that way. Well, he said, my father had written an article said, we're all born sinners. We're, and that's homosexuality, transgenderism, whatever it is, is a symptom of, of sin. And when people are Christian gay... That means they're going to, or Jewish gay, they're going to deny the, the teachings of the Bible or God himself and try to live a certain way. And that's that was one of the things he tried to get across back then. And now it's coming to a head where you can't even say anything like that or you're going to be biased. or. But, Paul, here's what the homosexual community will say. they God doesn't create any imperfections, so they were born perfectly gay. How do you battle that argument? Well, they that's don't. okay. That's that's fine. But you got to prove it genetically, and that that's one of the things you can't. That nobody wants to go with genetics or DNA. Well, and that's where we have to. That's where we also, though. I would say, Frank and Paul. I would say that's where we have to speak truthfully, and we have to correct error when it's there. That we're not made perfectly. We are made, yeah. and we're fallen when we're made. And, and I want to make sure that this is said. And and those people that don't want to hear this will will not hear this. But it's on tape and it's recorded. I love sinners. I don't care what your sin is. I'm not against gays. I have gay people in my family, and they will tell you that I love them. What I'm against is the political movement called the LGBT question mark movement that wants to make me forget my truth, the truth I know, and fall to their level of confusion. What does the devil do? He confuses people. The devil causes chaos. And when a man walks up and says, today I'm a woman, that's chaos. And that's the work of the devil. And the devil stands for what? Sin. It's real easy. You you don't have to call me a name other than fellow sinner. And that's it. Is it okay to hate sin, though? Um, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't like that saying, "Hate sin, but love the sinner." I don't know. I'm. I guess I'm okay with that. I don't know why that. I don't like the word "hate" anywhere. I don't think I hate anything. I suppose I do if we talked about it. All right, we're coming back next hour. PC, how about you? I want to hear from you live on the truth. <laughs> 